What I want to think about in this video is cell size, and in particular, how small cells can get, and then also what tends to be the limiting factors for how large a cell can get. And I have some pictures of cells here. This, this picture right over here, this picture of Pseudomonas bacteria, each of these pill-shaped things, this is a bacterial cell. And just to get a sense of scale, the width of this pill is around one micrometer. So this is approximately one micrometer, which is the same thing as one millionth of a meter. Or you can think of it as one thousandth of a millimeter, whatever helps you conceptualize this better. And then the length here, this is about five micrometers. This is approximately five micrometers. Now over here, I have some pictures of cells that you would find in the human body. These are red blood cells. These have a diameter, these have a diameter of about seven micrometers. You see a similar scale for these white blood cells or some other things in here. Over here, we see a human sperm cell about to penetrate a human egg cell. And human egg cells are some of the largest, some of the largest cells you'd find, especially if we're talking about spherical especially if we're talking about spherical cells. And this cell here, this is going to have a diameter on the order of 100, 100 micrometers. So the first question we would, and it's kind of neat that all of these pictures are almost on the same scale, so you can almost, you can almost compare them. But the first question we ask is, well, how small can a cell get? Well, if you think about it, a cell is a living thing. It's actually quite complex. It has to have information, it has DNA, it has to be able to replicate itself. It has all of this metabolic machinery. So there, I just did some reading, and the, the smallest cells observed, and they think this might be the smallest cells, period, although I'm, you know, there, there might be future ones that are discovered that are even smaller, are actually on the order of about a few hundred nanometers. Remember, 1,000 nanometers would be the width of this pill. So a few hundred nanometers, like maybe like something like that, would be maybe 300 nanometers. These were the smallest cells discovered so far. And they are bacterial cells. They were discovered at the University of California, Berkeley. And we think that this is pretty close, pretty close to, to the lower bound. Because you've got to remember, we have to store all of this genetic information and all the cellular machinery. So you know, that stuff's complex, and you can only get so small. But what about the upper bound of cells? Well, one of the things that, that tends to be the limiting factor, and there's other things as well, but it's the ability for, it's the ratio of volume to surface area. And why does volume, why does that, why does the ratio of volume to surface area matter? Well, because the surface is what interfaces the cell with its surroundings. It has to take in nutrients and, and take out the waste. So each unit of surface area, it has to process the inputs and the outputs for a certain volume of cells, and as well, or for a certain volume of the cell. And as we'll see as a cell grows, they don't, the volume and surface area don't grow together. The volume increases faster than the surface area does. So as you grow, each unit of surface area has to handle the processing with the environment for more and more volume. To, at, at some point, it just can't handle it. It can't take in nutrients and get rid of, uh, uh, of waste fast enough. And to, to make that a little bit more tangible, let's think about it mathematically. So the volume, the volume of a sphere, let's say this is a sphere here, so let me make it look a little bit more three-dimensional. If it has radius r, its volume is going to be 4 thirds pi r cubed. Now its surface area is going to be, its surface area is going to be 4 pi r squared. Now let's calculate vol the ratio of volume to surface area, because that's what we really care about. The ratio of volume to surface area is, I want to do surface area in yellow, to surface area is equal to, it's equal to 4 thirds pi r cubed over, over 4 pi r squared. Now luckily this simplifies quite nicely. 4 divided by 4 is 1, pi divided by pi is 1, r to the third divided by r squared is just going to be r. So this all simplified very nicely to r over 3. And if we wanted to care about units, it would be cubic units of volume, or it would be cubic units divided by square units, uh, when we're, whichever unit we're looking at. So this is going to be r over 3. So let's use this to think about what happens as a cell gets much as as a cell gets much larger. So for simplicity, let's look let's focus on this white blood cell here and just to make the math easy, let's assume that it has a radius. Let's assume it has a radius of 3 3 micrometers. 
I'm going to do this in a color you can see, three micrometers. So in that case, for this cell, its volume to surface area is going to be three, three, we could just say three micrometers divided by three, but I'll put three, we could say three micrometers divided by three, which of course is just going to be one micrometer. But having a unit of one micrometer for volume to surface area doesn't really make a lot of sense. An equivalent unit would say one cubic micrometer, one cubic micrometer per square micrometer. Per square micrometer. Because we're doing volume to surface area. And obviously, if you let the units cancel, you did a dimensional analysis, you'd be just left with this micrometer. But this helps us conceptualize it a little bit more. Because it says that each square micrometer needs to handle one cubic micrometer of cellular volume. So each square micrometer, so a square micrometer for this, for this guy over here is going to be around that size, it's going to handle the processing, on average, for one cubic micrometer of volume. All right, that seems reasonable, and that's a reasonable size for a cell. But what if we were to increase things by a factor of 1,000? So, or increase the radius by a factor of 1,000. So, and I'm obviously not drawing this to scale, but let's say we find some new organism, or we theorize some organism, that has a, that's cellular radius, instead of it being three micrometers, so this was three micrometers, it's 3,000. 3,000 millionths of a meter. And just to be clear, this isn't ginormous by our scales. This would be three millimeters. This would be three millimeters. It would be visible by the human eye. The kind of threshold of what the human eye can see is about a tenth of a millimeter, which is 100 micrometers. This is approximately, or this is one tenth of a millimeter. So on the right conditions, you could just barely see a human egg cell. But this right over here, this, is, this would be still small by our scales, but let's just think about what happens to the volume to surface area. Volume to surface area, 3,000 micrometers divided by three, 3,000 micrometers divided by three, we'd be left with, this is 1,000 micrometers, or even better, we could write this as 1,000 cubic micrometers per square micrometer, per square micrometer. So now each square micrometer, in this case, it had to handle a, a cubic micrometer of volume. But now it has to handle 1,000 a thousand cubic micrometers of volume. So it has to handle, it has to handle much more, much more volume. And that's going to break down. It's not going to be able to exchange the gases, exchange the nutrients, exchange the waste fast enough to, for this cell to function. So this is a very important ratio, volume to surface area for cells. And it actually ends up, well, I'll just talk about, I'll just talk about cells in general. It actually tends to be an interesting thing as, as a lot of things grow, volume to surface area or mass or, 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 or mass. Well, there's, there's a lot of other ratios that are interesting, but this is one of them. Now, the other factor that will play in is as also as a cell gets larger, the machinery has to just tra traverse more distances. You have to transport things over longer distances, uh, which also can become cumbersome. But the volume to surface area is a really interesting one to think about why we don't tend to see very, very, very large, especially spherical cells. And the reason why I emphasize spherical cells is because you do see cells that are longer than even this scale, like, like, like nerve cells. And they get by with that. They have other adaptations, but one of them is to just be really skinny and long. So this is one way that they can, they can maximize their surface area. So like that, this is a nerve cell. Other ways that you'll see cells that maximize their surface area is that they have a lot of things that kind of stick out to maximize. So cells aren't, are clearly not all spherical. So they could have other things that maximize their surface area like that. So there's a bunch of adaptations, but in general, modeling them as a sphere isn't a crazy thing to do. And this is why we don't tend to see cells much larger than a human egg cell.